Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. And I want to show you one of our latest builds. So I'm pretty excited about this. A lot of people have reached out and they've asked, when are you going to do a build with all the Infinity Kappa Perfect speakers? Well, today is your day. This is a 2017 Street Glide Special. Uh, Kelly, the owner, brought it to me with the normal problems that we see from stock Harley Audio. He's got the GT radio. GT is the radio with the rubber buttons on the side. It's got navigation. It's got Bluetooth but it doesn't do Apple CarPlay, it doesn't do Android Auto. The display is pretty hard to see in the sun and the sound is pretty terrible unless you flash the radio to fix all of its flaws. But even then, the Bluetooth takes forever to connect. So one of the first things we're gonna do to it is we're gonna upgrade it to a new radio. We're gonna use the Soundstream HDHU14 GTS style radio. That's gonna make it look like a new bike. It's going to add faster Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a great EQ so we can make this sound as good as we can. It's also going to retain our thumb controls, and this particular radio is IPX6 rated. So it's the same water rating as the factory radio, so we don't have to worry about getting caught in the rain. So let's talk about the next part. So the speakers, these are the factory regular Harley speakers. They're about a five and a quarter inch speaker, but you can put a six and a half right in this location. So we're going to be putting the Infinity Kappa Perfect 600X component speakers in the front. Now we're gonna mount them like a coaxial with the tweeter in the middle, and we're gonna use the new Infinity grills. It's gonna give this fairing a much better look because the grill looks better, the radio looks better, and it's just gonna update it greatly. Next, we're gonna take it from two speakers to four. So we're gonna use the Infinity Kappa Perfect 900X 6x9s as well, and that's gonna give us that surround sound, and the 6x9s are gonna give you more bass and more rear fill, so it's gonna have a much better sound. But to make all of that sound like it should, we're also going to be adding this amplifier. So this is one of the amps we build here at Volunteer Audio. It's completely plug and play to our HDHU14 Soundstream radio. It's for a very, very easy install. All you have to do is plug this into the radio, plug the factory radio connector in here, route this back to the battery, and you're going. Because we've already set all the gains, all the filters, everything is preset exactly for this system. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I hope you hang out and watch the video and see the results when we get done at the end. So hang out with us. All right, first step, we're gonna get our fairing removed. We're gonna start with our Torx bolts around the top of the windshield. We're going to go ahead and remove the two outside ones. These can be done with a T25 or a T27 torque socket. As we take our bolts out, we're going to lay them in our tray. It's going to keep everything organized. And when they're all back on the bike, we know we're done. All right, we're going to loosen the center bolt. We're going to pull our windshield out. Now, if you notice, I've already installed our fender protector. Always a good idea. So if you do happen to slip and drop something, we don't get a dent in our fender. All right, let's go around to the other side and we'll get the other bolts out. All right, so we're gonna remove both of the bottom bolts, one on each side. These are the shorter ones. There's two longer bolts that go right below the mirrors. Longer one at the mirror here. And one more on the other side. All right, let's go around to the other side and let's take this fairing off. All right, now we're gonna finish taking out this center screw. We're just gonna take it loose because we can leave it actually in the fairing. And then as we pull this forward, I'm just gonna undo our headlight this one's got an aftermarket headlight, so let's find the easier place to unplug it. All right, all right. Now we've got our fairing to the side. So next, we're going to go ahead and take this vent out. Again, just two more Torx bolts, one on each side. We're doing this for more access to where our radio is going to go, as well as access to all, or sorry, as where our amp's going to go, as well as we're also going to have more access to the bolts to get the plate off to get to the radio. All right, so on this bike, since it did not have factory rear speakers, 
This connector is your factory rear speaker connector. That's where our backbone harness is gonna connect and factory, it's got a little rubber block off in it. There's also two additional harnesses here. One of these is for the wireless headset interface module, which this bike did not have installed. And most of the time we see they don't already have one on there. And then there's an additional plug. I think it's for the CB or some other accessory. Not really sure. So next I'm gonna unplug our GPS antenna. We're not gonna be using it anymore because our new radio is gonna use the GPS inside of your phone. So it does not require an antenna. So we're gonna get it out of here. Let's unstick it from this plate. Just some two-way tape that we're gonna to have to unstick. All right, so we've got that off. We're gonna save that in case the owner decides it's gonna sell his radio. He'll have that to go with it. All right, we're gonna unplug all the harnesses here around the top. I'm gonna to use a small screwdriver just to lift up on the clips or the retainers. There's one on each side of the speedometer. We use our panel removal tool. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the wiring going on to each side of the pods because after we get this plate off, we're going to be removing the pods next. So we might as well get this undone. Unplug your front speaker on each side and disconnect any remaining plugs. One of those would be the cigarette lighter over here. All right, so we've got all that wiring out of our way. Now we're going to use a T25. We're going to remove the Allen heads around the perimeter. These are the ones that go from this plate to the speaker pods. There's two on each side. You'll notice as we take them out, I lay them in order in our tray. This makes it really easy keeping everything organized when you go back together later. So I'm taking the four bolts out that held the tray to the radio. And then there's a fifth one that holds this tray to the storage pocket where your USB port is. All right, now we only have two more, the ones that go to the bottom of our speedometer. tray is free. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove the speedometer. We have one more bolt at the top. It's going to give us room to get our radio pulled out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and disconnect the remaining connectors from the radio. So we have our AM FM antenna, which has a button on the bottom that you push to release. Sometimes they can be a little difficult to have them let go. There we go. The USB has a button on top. You press down. And then we have our main radio connector, which it has a sl small push button here on the side that will release this lever, and allow you to turn it to unplug it. All right, you need a 3 16 Allen head tool to take the four bolts out that are remaining that hold the radio in. Gonna look so much better with this new radio in.
All right, so we got our bolts out. Let's lift the radio out, set it over to the side. All right, so next step, I wanna remove both of our pods because we're gonna be putting new speakers in and also replacing the grills. To do this, I'm gonna show you a way to do it that's a little easier. Some of our other videos, I show you how to access the three bolts under here with an extension and a wobble. But since we've got the radio out anyways, I'm gonna show you how to take this tray out of the way and get to it a little bit more directly. First, I'm gonna take a couple more of these harnesses loose. Unplug them from these original places that they snap into. One's on each side. Now, there are two Phillips headed screws that go into some plastic clips. Remove both of those and go ahead and pull those clips out. This little tray is just kind of some wire management from Harley for all the data lines that run to your handlebars. Once we've removed those clips, we're just gonna be careful and just slide this out, watching your wiring as you go. Just kind of take it loose and get it out of your way. Now what that's done is that's opened up this area for you to access your bolts much easier. So I'm gonna get an 11 millimeter and our ratchet and we're gonna get those removed. All right, like I say, there's three bolts factory on each side. Sometimes we go to do this and we find out somebody else decided it didn't need all three. If you take them out, put them back in. If they're missing, go to a hardware store and pick up a couple and put those in. This is very, very important. Because these are basically the frame for the whole inner fairing. Because once that is loose and those bolts are gone, the whole fairing is loose and it moves around. So if any of them are missing, be sure to put them back in. So grab your 316s. You just took your radio out and take the bolts around the pod out. There's only three of them. One on the side, one up here at the top corner. And then one more inboard mounted here next to our gauge. All right, now our pot is loose. All right, we're gonna go ahead and remove the other three hard bolts down here. These can be a little difficult to get out without dropping. There's one. We got one more to go. So I dropped one. It's pretty common that I do that, but I've got a magnet nearby. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull those other three bolts out. All right, so unplug and let's go over to the counter and change out our speakers. All right, let's pull one of these factory speakers out and we'll compare it to our new ones from Infinity. Again, our handy T25 Torx bit screwdriver is gonna do this job as well. Not many tools needed. You should have most of these in the garage. If not, it's pretty inexpensive to pick up an 11 millimeter, a 13 millimeter, and a couple Torx screwdrivers. Try to do this with basic hand tools just to make it easier for you. Number one, it doesn't make as much noise when we're doing the job, and it shows you how you can do it with stuff that you have readily available. So inside of our speaker pod, we're gonna have two speaker connections going to the factory speaker. There's gonna be a clear one. It goes to the terminal that is marked positive, and then there's a black one that's slightly larger that goes to the negative terminal. So let's check out our speakers in comparison. So this is our stock Harley speaker. It's really a five and a quarter inch speaker fit into a six and a half inch cavity. So I'm, I'm pretty happy because the older 98 to 13s would have been five and a quarter and a six and a half wouldn't fit without an adapter. So at least Harley did think about letting us put a better speaker in 
without having to adapt or cut something. The back of this speaker is extremely weak. It has an extremely small magnet. This magnet is neodymium, but it's so small and so weak that we can't get it to pick up really anything metal. It's not very efficient, yet it is very, very lightweight because there isn't anything here. Now our new speaker from Infinity has this nice carbon fiber style cone. It's got a loudspeaker designed cone with an inverted surround. That inverted surround keeps it from ever rubbing the grill or giving us any problems. It also has a solid cone with a separate tweeter mounted in the middle. This tweeter could be removed and mounted in a different location. Let me show you with this tool here. So if you ever open up these speakers and you've got this tool and you go, what does that do? It is solely to go into the tweeter to allow you to take it in or out of the speaker. So there you go. You can see it's an actual separate tweeter that could be mounted in a component set. Now in your Harley install, it's going to be much easier just to leave it here in this bridge and install it that way. Now on the back of the speaker, I want to point something out that's very important. So these are what's called bi-amp capable speakers. The woofer has a separate set of connections from the tweeter. This is very similar to a Boom Stage 2 speaker, but without a lot of the limitations that come along with Boom 2. What I like about this is if you had a Boom 2 system that's continually blown speakers, you could upgrade them to the Infinity Kappa Perfect 600Xs and simply connect both sets there. So your tweeter connections to the tweeter, woofer to woofer. Now, I point this out because when you're putting in a new set, in the box is a crossover. Infinity sends this out to you, and you must use this. If you're not using a DSP and eight channels of amplification to buy up this system, you're going to have to use the crossover. And it works really, really well, and it's really easy. You simply take the ones marked WF for woofer and plug those in where they go. Take the TW ones for tweeter and plug them in where they go. So we have a negative and we have a positive. Now they're clearly marked, very easy to figure out where they plug into. That's going to leave you two other connections that are the correct size to plug into our factory connections. So you have a silver one that is slightly larger. That's going to plug into the black connection. Make sure I don't pull this clear protector back a little bit. We want to make sure that it plugs in and it plugs in tight. Pretty good lock. Let's slide this clear piece back over. You can get both hands free here. All right, that's just going to keep any of these wires from touching each other. Same thing on the positive. I'm just going to pull the clear part back so I have access to the terminal, plug it into the positive terminal. And this is something you really can't mess up because the negative is larger and will only plug in to that terminal. It will not plug into the positive terminal. I'll eventually get this to slide over. All right, there we go. All right, so once you've made those connections, all you're gonna do and this one definitely has some magnetic properties. It's picking up stuff off the table. All you're gonna do is set the crossover into the pod and then line up your speaker to where you can bolt it in. Now, Infinity did something that I find is a little bit strange. They've made it where the speaker will not go in, will not go in with the logo straight. They're gonna be on a 45 degree angle. I'm somewhat okay with that, but my OCD really, really messes with me. But once the grill's installed, you really cannot see it. And the grill does have an even logo. They do include replacement screws with it, which you're welcome to use, but the factory screws go right back into the pod. There's not really a reason to have to change them. But if you're the type that has maybe a road glide, and you've attempted to do this, and you drop a screw, and it disappears into the fairing, you have some extras. So start off four screws, tighten them all the way down. Then we're ready for reinstallation. Now I'm gonna grab our other pod, go ahead and swap it out, then we'll go back, change our grills and put them in the bike. All right, so we want to remember this step because I forgot it before. And if so, you gotta pull your pods back out. We've got some new grills we're gonna put in place 
and now is the best time to do it while we still have the speaker pod out. Now, Infinity is really cool in the sense that they're going to send us new grills for Street Glide, Road Glide, and Tour Pack. So inside the same box, it's going to come up with every grill you're going to need, and you're not going to have to buy those separately. It does give it a much better look, and they match the grills that are in the rear speakers that we're putting in the lids. Get them all started before you tighten any of them. All right, same thing on the other side. All right, so we got both of our grills installed and we're ready to put our Infinity Cap of Perfects back in. So we're gonna start with our perimeter bolts just to hold it in place while we get those lower bolts in. All right, so we've got those three in and tight. Next we're gonna take our three to go to the inside. This is kind of like a frame mount. I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna start them by hand first, just to make sure they start good and straight. Now that they're started, I'm going to zap them in over their ratchet. All right, let's put our other pot in now. Again, just use your hand and start each one of these bolts by hand to make sure they start because they're going into a brass insert. Definitely don't want to get them cross-threaded. Plus, you can get them all three started before you tighten any of them and you're not going to have to back them back out where something doesn't line up right. They're not easy to see and they're not easy to get to. So we definitely don't want a problem there. We're having a fight in that same situation. Get a ratchet and we'll tighten those up. All right, so those three bolts are now tight. It's time to move that tray back into the position where it used to be with all this wiring. It's going to Again, just being mindful of the wiring, wires and that we don't get anything caught or pinched. I'm just gonna feed it back in where it goes. 
if you pay attention at the back of this plastic plate, there are two little ears that stick out and they feed into a metal channel. Once you get those lined up, it's gonna let you go all the way into where you can put your clips back in. All right, so next step, let's drop our new radio in place. We'll start putting all our harnessing and the top plate back on. All right, let's take a second, kind of show the differences between these two radios. All right, so here's what we've got. We've got our original GT radio, and we have our new replacement Soundstream Reserve HDHU14. If you notice, both of them have a full aluminum chassis. So they've built it just like factory. The offset of the screen is the same, except for it looks like the new GTS radio. It looks much better, much cleaner, and it makes it look like you've bought a new bike. It also uses the exact factory Harley connector, USB, and antenna, while adding RCA connections and a microphone input. It's a pretty amazing radio. It's also IPX6 rated, so it's water, waterproof, or we'll say water rated like the factory radio. Nothing's actually waterproof. But it is IPX6 rated, which means a water hose washing a bike isn't gonna cause trouble. Definitely don't ever pressure wash your radio, even if it's the factory one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our radio in. It's gonna fit back in just like factory, and we're gonna reuse those factory bolts. Now inside the packaging, there's four little rubber or plastic parts, little round pieces. You're probably like, what do they do? Well, they're isolators. They go on the bolt, because these are stainless bolts, and it isolates it from the aluminum chassis of the radio. At the same time, it centers it perfectly where it was factory. So let's put those in the hole, push down, which will work that up the bolt so you can thread it in. Get that one started and we'll move on and do a couple more. Now, here's a good time, and you really should have done it before you pulled the original radio, but just take a look at the gaps around the original radio. This fairing does not fit the factory radio tight. Because of that, it can't fit this one any better because this is the exact size in every dimension and bolts in just like your original radio. Harley knows there's a gap and that's why they put this large piece of foam top and bottom of the radio. But you're gonna be real picky and nitpicky because you just did all this work and you're looking at it real close and you're gonna ask yourself, did I do something wrong? There's a gap there that I didn't realize was there before. It was there before. All right, so now we've got our radio bolted in. We're gonna take our top kind of metal tray and put it back on top. This is what our amps later gonna to mount to. I wanna almost skip the step. Let me go ahead and get our gauges in. There you go between that plate. Now we slide that plate on forward. All right, so Soundstream's done an excellent job with the design of the radio, all the way down to putting the exact same factory threaded holes so that we can bolt this right back just like the original radio did. If you had a road glide, there would actually be a bracket that went on top of the original radio. It also transfers to these same holes. All right, so after we have those four in, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna put the one that held this storage pocket in place. All 
All right, let's put our two bolts in here at our gauge cluster. All right, so we've got our Allen heads that go on each side. Sometimes these can be just a bit of a pain to get lined up. All right, got that one started straight. Let's see if we can do that again. Sometimes if I'm having a hard time getting one to line up, I'll put something in it that lines it up for me. And then tighten the other one so it'll hold it there. So we definitely don't want to cross thread any of these bolts. All right, so we got our bolts started straight. We're gonna go ahead and finish tightening them up. All right, let's put our other Allen heads in out here. All right, so now I'm gonna finish tightening my top radio plate bolts. Now that all the other ones are in. All right, we're making good progress. Let's go ahead and get our harness that we took off earlier and put it all back in place where it went. So we're just gonna follow right up the pod here, plugging in our front speakers, snapping into each one of these factory places. That was holding it to begin with. All right, make sure when you plug your gauges in, you go in good and straight. You don't want to bend any pins, so you don't have any future gauge problems. Now, in this case, we're doing the Soundstream radio. If you're using a stock radio, we have a very similar setup to allow you to do so. I just want to point out, up here at the top, you'll see there's a plug with a block off in it. This is the accessory plug where your amp turn-on wire would plug in if you were using a factory radio. In this case, since we have the HDHU14, we're gonna use the amp turn-on straight from the back of the radio. I'll plug our cigarette lighter back in. All right, so let's look down here at the back of our radio. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some of the things that need to go back in. So we have our FM antenna. We also have our USB. Now this USB is the factory USB that plugs into the HDHU14. It's very proprietary. It's only available back at Harley, but we do keep them in stock. We keep them in stock because sometimes you have an electric light standard or a police bike, or maybe you used to have a Sony radio like the 5000 or AX7000, and you took your USB out. Also, some of these bikes are getting six, seven years old, and that USB's been through a lot and it doesn't make a good connection. So we do have replacement USBs in stock that plug right into the radios. All right, so let's get our amplifier. We're gonna clean the top here and we're gonna set our amp in place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep this just by cleaning this plate with some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. 
just get any dirt off of it so that we can get a good stick from our Velcro pad that holds our amp down. All right, so this is our amplifier, and I want to point out a few things. A lot of companies claim to have a plug and play amplifier. I think we're one of the few companies that actually do because that really insinuates you don't have to do anything but mount it and plug it in. And that's what we do here at Volunteer Audio. All the settings have been done. The gains, the crossovers, everything's preset. The amp comes in this case already attached to a big piece of Velcro. But all you have to do is clean like you just saw and stick the amplifier right here on top. Once you do that, it's very, very simple to continue forward because we have our power and ground that we're gonna route back to our battery. I'll show you how to do that here in just a minute. That's just two Phillips screws at the battery. And then we have our harness that plugs into our radio. So if you'll notice, it actually is plug and play. It's gonna come down here. It's gonna plug in. So now our amplifier is in place. The other side of this is just gonna plug into our factory radio connection. Those two plugs just added everything we needed to add this amplifier in place. So the input, which is the output of the radio is fed to the input of the amp. The output of the amp is now fed back to all the factory wiring. So we didn't have to cut anything. We didn't have to modify anything. That means this backbone harness plug for the rear speakers is now active. If we had tour pack speakers factory, they would already be working. So no wiring has to be altered to be able to get all of this done. And our front pods are already connected to our amp. So it really is that simple. So I'll do a little bit of wire management and get this tidied up and in here. And next we'll run this to the back. All right, so I got the wiring and the fairing tidied up. Next step, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the seat and the gas tank so we can get ready to run our power and our ground back to the battery along with our backbone harness to the rear of the bike for the rear speakers. All right, this particular bike's just got a thumb screw that was very tight holding the secondary seat on. Looks like two more thumb screws under the seat. This is a very clean bike. Really like this denim gray. Looks really good on it. And a CVO style seat. All right. All right, now we've got our seat off and we've exposed a couple things that we're gonna to move to next. So we're gonna be pulling the gas tank. There's two bolts at the base of the gas tank and one on each side at the front. And the front ones are right behind these rubber covers. So we're gonna go ahead and take those off. We're gonna make sure we put those on at the end. But before we pull anything, we're gonna start undoing the connections from the gas tank to the bike. So one of those is gonna be this fuel vent so if it builds up too much pressure, fuel's gonna get pushed out, and this is gonna carry it down to the ground. Now this runs right inside the frame rail. Definitely when you get done, make sure it goes back there because it's really close to the exhaust and we don't want it to touch it. We also have a vent here, or I'm sorry, fuel return that returns fuel back from the motor. And then we have our actual gauge, which it has one zip tie keeping us from unplugging it. So we're gonna unplug our sending unit for our fuel gauge. All right, so those are the three connections on this side. I'm gonna throw some gloves on, let's disconnect the fuel line. All right, so I'm gonna quickly show you how to disconnect your fuel line. I'll grab this paper towel because a few drips may come out. There's a little chrome sleeve you're gonna lift up, kind of twist and move, it's gonna move upward, and then your fuel line's gonna come out. Now, as soon as it comes out, it shuts the fuel off. So no matter how much gas is in the tank, hopefully it's not full, uh, it's not gonna continue to leak out on the engine. Very, very easy to do, and make sure you put this back at the end or your bike won't start. All right, we're gonna remove our two 13 millimeters at the back of the gas tank. Now, one bolt on each side at the front. All 
out. Now that our gas tank's disconnected, all we gotta do is pick it up, carry it somewhere. This one seems to be pretty full. All right, so our gas tank's off and we've exposed what we call the backbone of the bike. So if you'll cut this little bit of Tessa tape here on each side and take a little screwdriver, you can unpop each one of these clips and this cover is gonna come off. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll expose the wiring and where we're gonna run our power and ground to the back of the bike. Now some of these will have three sections of tape, some have no tape. In this case, there's only one. Makes it just a little easier. All right, I'm normally to start at the top, take a little screwdriver, pry in to release each one of these clips. All right, there you go. As you see, not very difficult to get the cover off. Now you see where Harley ran the wiring. And this is where we're gonna run our wiring. We think this is the best place. Sometimes people get scared to take the gas tank off or maybe they just think it takes a lot of time and it really doesn't. But they'll run the wire up through the side here under the gas tank. It's a really bad idea because you're really close to a really hot engine. And if the wire falls down, especially this large power and ground wire, it's gonna short out on the engine. All right, let's go to the front and I'll show you where, how we're gonna route the backbone harness and the power harness back, and then we'll feed it to the battery. All right, so if you bought a kit from us to add rear speakers to a bike that didn't have it, you're gonna get this backbone harness. Now, if you order a kit for tour pack speakers, you're not gonna get this because it was factory installed. But we're gonna take this little connector in the front. This is what we call the rear speaker connector, and we're gonna plug in the harness that we sent you. Plug it all the way in until you see it click. And now we're gonna route that right back where the factory wiring went. So come right through here, reach around, just pull it on through. We'll zip tie this as we go back. Now I'm gonna leave a little bit of lead in here because it comes with a lot of lead and we don't need that much underneath the seat. We also, when you get your kit from us with your amplifier, the power and ground wire is already completely connected Fuse holders installed, everything's ready to go. So we're just gonna route it back as well. Same thing, just following the, the way the original factory wiring ran. We're gonna pull it through. Now I'm gonna add a couple zip ties in here just to hold these harnesses, and then we'll get this ran into the backbone. All right, so I'm just gonna lay our wires up here temporarily and I'm going to take a couple zip ties and I'm gonna secure this to the factory harness up here in the front. You should always start at the front and work your way to the back, securing as you go. All right, now, so when it comes to the area where all these factory wires are, I just kind of push them over a little bit just to make room for our harness to drop into the side. We're not actually gonna zip tie to anything in here. We're just gonna make room for it to lay in the same area. Bringing the excess back here toward the battery. So now that we've got it laid in there, we're gonna put our cover back on. Starting at the front, just working our way to the back, and just keep good close attention to factory wiring. Like you see here, I had a couple of wires trying to come out the side. If you see that, you wanna put them back in place. Don't need any of them coming out and getting pinched. Now, this isn't a really hard process. We've done it many, many, many times. So I make it a little easier, make it look a little easier than it probably is. But it's not gonna take nearly as long as you probably thought it would. Make sure and put your, this cover back on. It's just gonna protect the brake lines from getting squished by the gas tank. So now that all this is ran to the back, I like to go ahead and get the gas tank and put it back on. So I'm gonna do that now. All 
All right, we're going to start by tightening or starting the bolts at the back of the gas tank. Don't go all the way down with them yet because we need to get the front of the gas tank lined up. All right, we're going to feed this vent tube right back down here where it was factory. And we'll go ahead and plug our fuel return back up. I'm going to leave this disconnected. That's the gauge center for just a couple minutes because next step we're going to go ahead and pull our battery cover and go ahead and connect up our amplifier. To do that, we're going to use the same tool we just used on our gas tank, so 13 millimeter, and remove the two bolts at the rear of the battery. Now we're going to take our PCM, unclip it, just kind of lift it out of the way, and plug e unplug each one of the additional connectors that are connected up to this tray. And then we're going to remove the cover off the battery. All right, now that we have the cover off the battery, we're simply gonna take the, the uh, black wire, we're gonna connect it to the negative, and we're gonna take the fused wire, in this case it's blue, sometimes it's red, depending on which kit we put together. It's gonna go to the positive terminal. This is simply a Phillips screwdriver is all it takes to do this to your battery. Now, a lot of people ask me, do I need to upgrade my battery? Well, if you have an old battery, it's always a good idea to have a good, strong battery to run your new audio system. But with that being said, the amplifiers that we use are all within the voltage uh, requirements of the original battery system. So you do not have to, it's not a requirement that you upgrade your battery. If you decide to do so, we have some really nice AGM batteries that are actually better priced than the ones you're gonna get at the dealer and a lot better quality. And we also have some lithium options. They're even far, far stronger. So if you're the type that likes to play the music a long time with the bike off, maybe it's a good idea to get a longer amp hour battery or a lithium battery. The real big plus of lithium is how fast it recharges. So if you do pull it down listening to it, fire the bike up and it's just a short amount of time before it's charged back. It's about three to five times faster on recharge than your stock battery is. So we're gonna take our excess power wire that we have left. We're just gonna move it here in front of the battery along with our fuse holder. Now our fuse holder is waterproof. It is a motorcycle style fuse holder. And we do put some zip ties around it just to keep it from possibly coming unplugged up here in the fairing. I'm just kind of moving this stuff around trying to find a place that has the most room for it. Let me put our cover back on our battery now. Make sure if you got any harnessing here that it's out of the way. We've got it dropped back in. So let's go ahead and put our bolts back in it. So let's go ahead and clip all of our harnesses back where they go. Now's a good time to go ahead and re-plug in the fuel sending unit. We're making real good time. We've got the pretty much the whole front audio system done. So if we were doing a two speaker system, this would pretty much be the last step. Now we're not. We're also going to be adding our rear six by nines and we've got to do our cut kits next. All right, everything's back in place. And the only thing left up here is our rear speaker wire, which we'll take care of that here shortly.
All right, we're to that point. We're gonna do our cut kits. We're gonna actually cut the top of the lids and make room for our grills. So let's check out the components to go along with that. So first, we've got our template. This template's gonna fit the top of the lid. And as long as we trace that outline with our saw, when we're done, this particular grill is gonna fit the top of the lid perfectly, and it's gonna to sandwich to this other part. So this goes on top of the lid, this goes on the bottom, and then four screws hold it together. Both of these are gasketed to give us a watertight seal, and that's gonna give us the perfect place for our Infinity 6x9 to bolt up and seal in inside of the lid. Now, there's a few things that I do maybe a little different than some of the other people you may watch with this particular kit. First off, I'm gonna tape off the top of the lid. I'm gonna do that so that when we put the template in place, that the vibration of the saw doesn't vibrate the template around any and cause us to scratch our paint. I'm also gonna take another step. Every other template that we use from every other company has a cutout here that clears this handle and doesn't require us to remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the side of this to make room to where the handle doesn't have to be removed because way too many times I've gotten everything assembled and then realized, oh, I forgot to put the handle back on. So to keep from going through that, I'll just take a few seconds from my saw and I'll cut out where it clears. But first step, let's go ahead and tape off the top of the lids. This doesn't have to be perfect. We're just doing this for protection of the paint. I'm just gonna tape everywhere that the template touches the bag. And I've also already looked inside the bags. I've made sure there's nothing in it. They're completely empty, so we don't have to worry about any of the debris from this falling in and hurting anything or our saw actually going through and damaging anything left inside. All right, so to do this, you could use several different saws. We actually could use a jigsaw, or in this case, you could use a one-handed uh, sawzall or a hacksaw. It's gonna, I'm using what looks like a jigsaw blade. It's a specialty blade we buy just to go in here, and it allows us to basically scroll cut around all of this very nicely. Now, there's many different ways to cut this. This isn't the only way. This is just a method we choose to do. Now back to our template, let me kind of show you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut right along through here and make room that we clear that handle. All right, so I've cut just enough to clear. I'm gonna cut a little bit more just to make sure it's not holding us off any. All right, I'm good with that. So now I'm gonna grab my hardware and show you how that we're gonna screw this down to the top of the lid. All right, so you're just gonna put a little pressure on your template and find where it wants to just lay there on its own. And then you're gonna take these two screws that come with the kit. And we're gonna screw the template right into the lid. That's gonna hold it in place while you cut to make sure that it doesn't move and get you off track any. All right, so now we're gonna take a drill and all we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in here we're gonna cut us a drill us a starter hole. It's just a place to drop in our saw blade. We're gonna do that on the top and the bottom. There's two 90 degree curves that you gotta to try to go around with your saw. I don't do that. I follow this sweeping curve down and I stop at this point, go to this corner and stop, and then I cut back up. So I'm gonna drill another hole to start at the bottom. Now I've done this infinity setup 
I've done this infinity template several times. And when you go cutting this, you wanna follow the inside line on the infinity kit for a tight fit. If you follow the outside, it's gonna be a little loose when you get done. So I've got my top part done. Just as I told you, I start here, I do both ways. Now I'm gonna drop in the side and finish to each corner. So as you get to the end, you're gonna to get to the last point that your template's held together and you're gonna cut through the last rib. And I just wanna grab it and hold it really tight so that it doesn't move around once I've cut through the part that's holding it. All right. There we go, we've cut completely through it. Now we're gonna get a Vacuum, clean up our mess, untape it, and make sure that our, our grill fits very nice. All right, so we've got our cut done, thrown our template away, done a little bit of vacuuming. We'll do some more at the end. Now we're just gonna untape it. Now this does not have to be perfect. They leave you quite a bit of room in this template. And once it's together, you can't see any of this edge. All right, so I'm gonna take my grill, set it down where it's gonna go. Just kind of fill it out, make sure it looks like it all fits well. Looks like it does. So now we're gonna grab our four screws that are gonna hold our lower portion to our upper portion. And we're gonna open up our bag and install this. So always start all the screws before you tighten any of them up. All right, that one is started. All right, so I've got all four screws started. Now I'm gonna start tightening them up. Now this is just something that goes hand tight. Don't overly do this, it is plastic. We don't wanna break it. And you don't have to close the gap all the way up on the infinity kit. I have actually broke a couple of these on the first couple I put in. By over tightening them now, I'm very, very careful with them. All right, let's check it out on the other side. Our fit looks to be very good, very tight. Now, before I cut the other side, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the six pin on here and show you how it fits. As you notice, Infinity had a gasket on the outer grill, a gasket on the inner, so when they go together, they're gonna to be good and watertight. And there's an additional gasket here for where the six pin on mates up. So let's get our speaker and drop it into place. So it's designed and fits perfectly in this kit and they actually send you screws that are also the perfect length. So buying a kit that all is one brand and is all mated to go together really makes the install very, very simple. Now when you put your six by nine in, go ahead and point the uh, actual speaker wires 
toward the middle of the bag because that's where we're going to want to tie in our quick disconnect harnessing at. It also gives us a place to hide our crossover because this, like the front, has a crossover for the mid and the tweeter. And we'll go over that here shortly. So it's mounted, it looks really good. We'll come back to wiring here in just a little while. Let's go ahead and go to our other bag. We'll get it taped up and get it cut also. All right, so I got both bags. We've done the template, we've cut it out, we've installed our grill, our lower section, and our speaker. So now we're on to wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of the bags and I'm gonna put it up on the table so I can give you a little better view of what I'm doing, along with having a little bit of access to drill a hole through the back of the bag. All right, so again, we're gonna take our crossover that came with our speakers. We're gonna go ahead and connect those to the speaker. You're gonna have two terminals marked WF, positive and negative. It's also marked on the speaker in the same way. And we're also gonna have our tweeter connections. They're also sized, so there's a smaller one for the negative, a bigger one for the positive, but it's all marked and laid out. Now this is a pretty good sized piece here to have in the bag, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually hide it behind this cloth and zip tie it at the end to this little webbing, this plastic webbing underneath it. But first, we've got to get some wiring in the bag to tie it to. So when you buy this kit from Volunteer Audio, it's going to come with some rear disconnect wiring harnesses. It's pretty nice because it already has the ends we need to go in here and connect up, as well as the quick disconnect for the outside and the grommet to install in the bag. All we have to do is connect this or drill a hole in the right place. So I've got my drill bit. It's going to actually be a three quarter inch hole. And we're gonna come right up here between the latch, between the grommet, we're gonna step down right in this area. And from the outside, I'm gonna drill a hole inward. All right, so I'm using a unibit. I've already marked on my unibit right where to stop. I do this a lot, so it's handy to have it already pre-marked. All right, so I've got us drilled out there. Throw away this debris. All right, so in our kit we send you, you're gonna get a green disconnect harness and a purple one. The green goes on the left side of the bike, the purple one on the right. Uh, when you get to the Y part, it's actually labeled brake and clutch. But from the outside, we're gonna feed our two speaker wire connections inward and get down here to the grommet. When we get to the grommet, we're just gonna press fit it into the hole. Like I say, it's a three quarter hole that we just did. There we go, we've got our grommet installed. We're gonna pull quite a bit of wiring into the bag until we get it secured. And uh, then we'll pull what excess we have back to the outside. 
I'm gonna get some rubbing alcohol. I'm actually gonna clean some areas that we're gonna put some little stick pads and we'll get our wiring connections made next. All right, so we're gonna take some rubbing alcohol and we're gonna clean the inside edge of our bag. We're gonna do this front portion and all the way over here toward where our cloth is. Just clean this upper part because we're fixing the stick. A couple 3M double-sided adhesive zip tie bases in place here. So these come with the kit. We're gonna send you three per bag along with some zip ties. We're just gonna come over from here and we're gonna stick one inside. Come over to the other front edge. The same thing again. And we're gonna do another one right up here where our wire is gonna leave and go up to our speaker. All right, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and start these. I'm gonna leave them a little loose until we get done. And we'll tighten them and cut them down at the end. All right, so next we're gonna get to our wiring. So we're gonna take our negative terminal, I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna kinda of pull it out where I can get a good access to it, get this little plastic off of it. And then negative, when we're doing a bike that we've ran a new backbone harness, the polarity on the factory Harley connector and the fairing is actually backwards. So we're gonna take our negative, we're gonna hook it to our positive terminal. The positive terminal is the one without the stripe. Once we get that done, I'm gonna feed this clear portion back up. Let's try to keep things from later touching each other. We'll do the same thing on the, the larger one here. So the larger connector in the back claims to be a positive. It's kind of weird that they use such a big terminal. And it has kind of a hard time going into our connection. So I'm gonna take a little screwdriver and open this up. It went a little larger than most speakers and our wiring is designed for aftermarket speakers, not factory speakers, since there aren't really many factory 6 by 9s actually any factory 6 by 9s in the lids. It's a very tight fit, but as you've seen, with just a little bit of coercion with a screwdriver, you can make it fit. Now I'm gonna wrap up this with a little bit of Testa tape. This is the interior grade cloth tape. This is just to make sure it doesn't come loose in the future. All right, I'm gonna take a couple of our screws out here so you can get a better review of what I'm fixing to do. All right, so I took those out so we can get a better visible shot of what we're doing with our wiring. So we're gonna grab a couple more zip ties. I've got my flush cutters here. So what I want you to do is I want you to bring this crossover down and you're gonna feed a zip tie under this webbing. Now there's a flat side to this crossover, so I'm just gonna put it downward and then I'm gonna zip tie this so that it holds it in place. 
is a great place to put it because once, once you're done, it's all going to be hidden in behind that cloth when we go back together. Now I'm just going to pull the wire down and zip tie this back around itself. Super simple, and it looks really good when you're done. So now let's bring our cloth back here. Now it's time to actually secure this wiring all the way around and flush cut it. Making sure to work it as you go toward the outside of the bag. And we'll flush cut each one of those. All right, so we're gonna repeat that process on the other side and we'll, get, we'll catch back up under the seat installing the wire harness. All right, so all the wiring is done in the bags. We now have our leads up here to connect our wire harness to. So this just plugs into the backbone harness that we ran earlier. Very, very simple. Then we're just gonna match them up by color. It actually also says belt side and brake side. So brake side is gonna plug into this bag over here. Belt side here. Now we're gonna secure these so that they can be accessible outside of the bag. Some people wanna hide them. I think you're better off to leave them where they can be seen. Uh, the seat is gonna cover most of it, but if you go in for service work and they don't know these are there, there's a good chance that somebody is going to mess up your wiring. And it's not gonna be their fault because they couldn't see it because you hit it. So I feel like, you know, if they're gonna do something, we need to put it where they can see it. And then if they break it, you can blame them and make them fix it. All right, so we're gonna secure that one side down. Come over here, I'm gonna use this factory harness location. Again, I'm gonna leave this connector just outside of the bag. Now I'm going to bring these together. I'll bring them together over here by the ECM. We'll zip tie it to its harness. Let's go and cut that again. All right, so. We're gonna have a little bit of excess harnessing here. That's always the case. It's why I left probably six extra inches up in the fairing, just to make sure that we didn't have as much to deal with back here. But on most bikes, there's a pretty good area right up in here that there isn't anything in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a zip tie on this so it stays kind of together. And then I'm gonna fish it down in that empty void. We do this so it's not in the way later if you go to do any battery work. It's not gonna be something that you're having to try to fish or fight or get off on the top. We wanna get it where it's good and clean under the seat. Nothing's being squished from you sitting on it. And I'm just gonna continue by feeding the end of that harness in here with it. As you see, I was able to get it all the way down in there. I think that's a good spot for it. And we're ready to get to putting our seat back on. I'm gonna take this harness and feet just a little bit more toward this way. You can always adjust it just a little bit afterwards. They'll slide in those, in those holders. Two thumb screws on.
All right, both seat thumb screws are back on. Let's grab the other part of our seat. All right, so we just have a few little things left to do we haven't done yet. I've got two caps to go over the front bolts at the gas tank, and I'm gonna go ahead and reattach our fuel line. Same step as earlier, just lift up on that chrome sleeve, push the line in, it's gonna click, and it's sealed. Two rubber covers to go over top of our front gas tank bolts. This is why we put all of our bolts in a tray, because when you get to the end, anything you have left, go ahead and put it back where you haven't put it yet. move up to the front and we'll get our fairing installed. All right, so our seat's back on. We're down at the final part. We're fixing to let you hear just how amazing this Infinity Cap of Perfect System sounds. And so far I did fire it up. I did a little test. I always do a test and I check polarity. I make sure that everything is right before we put our fairing on. And the polarity check showed that everything was perfect. Did a quick listen. It's pretty darn amazing. And here in a second, I'll try to do my best to let you actually hear it in a video. And I understand it, nothing has ever done justice in a YouTube video as far as sound. And we'll see what the weather works out like and everything when the customer picks it up. Maybe we can set up doing a walk away, do something outside, try to let you hear it. All right, so our vent's on, so I'm gonna grab our fairing and we're gonna go back together with that. All right, so I'm just gonna plug our headlight back in. Fairing drops back in. Go ahead and start a couple of the bolts on the other side. I'm gonna do the long ones up by the mirror first. Just to make sure that our fairing's positioned right before we start trying to throw our windshield back on. I'm not gonna actually tighten these. I'm just getting them started to hold it. All right. On this particular bike, the owner's got one of these pouches. They're pretty common. Give you a little bit more storage. And we're gonna drop our windshield in place as well. Hope so far you've enjoyed the video. Hope that it showed you that this isn't really a very difficult task. As long as you look at it as individual small tasks, I think most people are capable of getting this job done. And at Volunteer Audio, we're gonna to try to make it even easier and we're gonna do a lot of the hard parts that we know you don't have the tools for before it ever leaves us. That makes it where it's definitely something you can do without any real background in the audio. All the gains are gonna be set, crossover set, all the things that we know you would have a hard time with and all the things that are very important in making sure that you have a really good experience. We're gonna put those labor hours in here ahead of time. Windshield appears to be lined up. I'm gonna tighten our middle bolt up now. All right, so I'm gonna put both of the bottom bolts in. All right, I think it looks really good. We got all our bolts back together. We'll get you moved over here. We'll fire the radio up, go over a little few of the options and see if we can let you hear it. All right, so we just got 
everything back together and we'll take a second we'll go over this build with you. First off, I want you to pay attention to the very, very nice Infinity grills that we have in the front. And the way this new Soundstream radio, let's pull off the protective screen here. I can get my finger to grab hold of it. All right, there we go. Make sure you remove that protective cover. I've had a couple of customers actually say they thought their screen was scratched. It was just the plastic. The actual screen is optically bonded glass, so it will not scratch. All right, so now look at this. The fairing looks beautiful. Not only did he already have this gloss black inner fairing, but now the radio matches it. So it looks like a GTS style radio, but with those added features, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It uses that stock USB. It'll play music on it or it will do these features. It also has Bluetooth, AM, FM, and all of your thumb controls still work. So we still have volume up and down, actually from either side. We have mute by pressing in the right side, and we have source change by pressing in the left side. So it's actually gonna go through our different sources. Turn it back down here in case it comes on blaring at us. We also have right and left of the left control will change track or station. All right, so that's just a little bit about the radio. Now look at the speakers. These Infinity Kappa Perfect 900Xs have a beautiful grill that matches the front. So we took it from just a plain Jane two speaker bike to a four speaker. It's got a very much so a CVO look. And at the same time, it angled that speaker at about a 15, 20 degree angle forward to be able to hear it better. Okay, that's a whole lot of words, a whole lot of stuff said, and all we care about is what it sounds like. So how about we try to play it and see if we can get a good representation of what it sounds like. Now we gotta do some copyright free music and these things are super musical. So I'm gonna play something here that kinda of goes all over the spectrum. All right, this thing is crazy. It is super loud, it's super clear. The bass is pretty amazing, but I'm pretty positive it's blowing out these mics. So I'm gonna change to a different song. We're gonna go to one that I think the, the microphones are gonna handle a little bit better. And let's see what we can find. Let's do a different copyright free tr track. Let's try this one. This thing is just so, so musical. I mean, just the instruments are so clear. It's exactly what I expected an Infinity Kappa Perfect system to sound like. You know, Infinity's owned by Harman. Harman owns almost every major company, including JBL, that does stage sound. So when you go to a concert, when you hear something that's been recorded in a studio, most likely that was done with something that Harman owns or makes. And Infinity is one of their top of the line uh, systems and Infinity Capital Perfect is the best. They only put that on their very best and it lives up to the name. It sounds great. So I was very excited to get to put this together. Hopefully we can get outside and do something that maybe shows you just how loud and how far away that we can go. Uh, and we'll see what the customer thinks when he picks it up too. All right, so we wrapped it up. 
this beautiful street glide in this denim gray is finished. I think it, we've added a lot of classiness to it. The music is on point. It is so crystal clean, so clear. Infinity, you have done an amazing job. Guys at Harman, all you engineers, you've really done a great job. Can't wait to see amps and things that they come out with in the future to go along with it. But for now, what you've done is really, really impressive. So let's recap real quick. We put the Soundstream HDHU14 radio in and upgraded from that factory GT radio. We put the Infinity Kappa Perfect 600X 6.5. These are the first speakers that Infinity's made specifically for Harley. Then we have the Infinity Kappa Perfect 900X 6x9s. Great part about those are they're waterproof, they're meant for a motorcycle, but they also come with those cut kits to modify the lids and install them included in the package. Now, when you buy this from Volunteer Audio, we have a package already with the amplifier. This had a Hertz 600 watt HMP40 amp, completely plug and play, pre-wired for this radio. We also offer it for your stock radio. So if you wanna keep the GT radio or maybe you have a GTS radio, just flash the radio, put our plug and play amp on it, and it's gonna sound like this too. But I think it is just an amazing, amazing sounding system. And this is so easy to replicate over and over again. If you want your bike to sound like this, reach out to us at Volunteer Audio. So you can go to www.volunteeraudio.com. We'll have links to this package in the description of this YouTube video. So just go there and you can click and go straight to them. You can also call me, 1-844-30-AUDIO. We'll get you to our sales team. Or you can just email us at sales at vaultaudio.com. Definitely comment below at the bottom of this video and I'll be the one that I answer all the comments. So you'll be talking straight to me. I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio. Send a comment, I'll reply back and we'll get you straightened out, answer whatever question, send you whatever links you need, maybe a kit for your bike. But again, thank you for watching. Please like this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Share this with your friends that may be looking to do audio in their Harleys as well. But thank you again, and as always, God bless.